Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today we'll have a look at a recent study which explores the impact of inhibiting CD38 on health span and lifespan. The study is interesting as it looks at many aspects of health span, such as frailty, metabolic health, and physical performance, as well as lifespan. It's also good to see that inhibiting CD38 did increase tissue NAD. First a disclaimer, that in this video we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the paper. CD38 inhibitor 78C increases mice lifespan and health span in a model of chronological aging. NAD levels decline with age, which causes physical and metabolic dysfunction. CD38 plays a key role in this decline. It is, however, not known whether inhibiting CD38 increases lifespan. Here the authors show increased lifespan and health span in naturally aged mice when inhibiting CD38 with 78C. There was a 10% increase in median survival and improved exercise performance, endurance, and metabolic function in the mice. The effects did differ between the sexes with males seeing better results. A quick review of CD38. The protein sits in the cell wall and is active on the outside of the cell. Its expression increases with age and particularly with the presence of senescent cells. The process we are interested in is this reaction here, where CD38 consumes large quantities of NAD and creates circular ADPR and nicotinamide. This is thought to be one of the key processes in the lowering of NAD levels with age. Hence, this study's aim to increase NAD by inhibiting CD38. And then what is 78C? This is a small molecule inhibitor of CD38. It can be delivered orally, but appears to be only available for research. Here is the overview of the study. There was a total of 82 mice, a mixture of males and females, and the study started with the mice aged 12 months, or about 58 in human terms. During the experiment, there was various measures of physical performance taken and the survival curves were recorded. Here are the survival curves. Males did best, with a 17% increase in median lifespan and a 14% increase in maximal lifespan. For females, there was no significant survival benefits. The cause of death was either natural, the animal was found dead for unknown reasons, or they were euthanized because of terminal illness. At the sudden decline of the female mice, euthanasia was a common reason. Interestingly, up until the sudden decline at day 385, the increase in female median lifespan had been significant. To put this into human terms, the mice would have been around 80 years old at 385 days into the experiment. Looking at physical performance, the animals were tested to exhaustion on a treadmill. These results are from the last test at week 50, when the mice were 24 months old. The paper did not have the exact figures for these, but looking at the graphs, the improvements seemed to be between 20 and 40%. And for endurance, they used the hanging grip strength test, which is measured by how long it takes the animal to fall. Again, we see that the 78C group did better. Turning to body composition, when the animals were 21 months old, so 38 weeks after starting 78C, we see that they had better composition with lower weight and fat percentage and higher lean muscle percent. Looking at the weight over time, the treated group had a lower and more stable body weight. The lower body weight in the control group that started at around day 337 was associated with increased frailty. The authors also compared the frailty of the animals. When the mice were 24 months old, they used the frailty index, a standardized way of measuring frailty in mice, to get a baseline score. They then split the mice into two groups, with and without 78C. The frailty scores for both were the same at the beginning. In fact, the 78C group looked a bit worse, but it was better when compared to the controls three months later and did not seem to deteriorate at all. They looked at the NAD levels in various tissues of the mice and did see a significant increase in all cases, 
Interestingly, they did not see a decrease in markers of senescence, which would imply that the mechanism of action is not through suppressing senescence. And finally, glucose metabolism, where they had three-month-old controls and 27-month-old treated group, which were on the diet for four weeks. At the beginning, as expected, the insulin in the age group was higher, but improved significantly over the four weeks, as did the HOMA IR, a measure of insulin sensitivity. They did not comment on the glucose levels, but these seemed mostly unchanged. These results were independent of diet or caloric intake. It's great to see a paper looking at wild-type mice with CD38 inhibition and to see such clear results. The lack of survival benefits for females is a concern, though whether this is an artifact of 78C or because of the CD38 inhibition is not known. As far as I'm aware, 78C is only available for research, and I do not see any clinical trials for it. Other possible CD38 inhibitors are epigenin and quercetin. It would be great to see if these have similar effects. A final thought is it does seem that raising NAD levels does increase health span and in males, lifespan, which is good news.